Hi, so before we get started, I'd just like to ask you, if you're new here, please consider subscribing to the channel and also at the end of the video, please consider give it a thumbs up if you found it useful. Also, leave a comment below on ways to and suggestions and ways to improve this video moving forward. Let's go. Okay, so in this video lesson, we're going to cover a parameterized tests, which is a core JUnit feature, which enables you to uh, essentially define um, the uh, input data to your test and then um, you know the um, uh, framework will inject those parameters and create uh, basically combinatorial uh, permutations of the tests using those input um, data and it's a very compact way of doing tests that require a lot of different combinations of input data so I've got here a very simple factorial class let's just implement it you know very simple um, let me create a st public static int method compute it takes a n and then um, let's just do if n is less than 2 then return 1 um, otherwise let's just return n times compute n minus 1 so that's a very basic implementation of the factorial let's create a test for it okay so now we have a test uh, for the factorial and let's uh, write a basic test so let me add my test method, test uh, factorial. Let's say I'm, I'm interested in testing the first five um, inputs to the factorial function. So I would write assert, assert that. So actually is factorial compute uh, zero. Then I'll use core matchers is core matchers equal to one. So that'll, that'll be the main, the, the first input. Let's just convert these to static imports to make this thing simple. And then obviously you know, I'll write a bunch of them. Uh, you know, I'll test factorial of one, I'll test factorial of two, factorial of three, factorial of four, and factorial of five. Now, if I were to run, run this, then it passes. Okay. So this is you know how you would do it. Now, uh, let me show you how you would do the same equivalent test, but using parameterized tests. So the first thing you do is you have to tag your uh, test with the parameterized class. So this effectively use a different runner. And um, and then uh, you create a private uh, int a field, which is the input to the test um, and as well as the output. You can call it output or expected. Okay. And let's add the constructor. So now we have the input, the expected uh, uh, value for the for the function, and uh, a way to inject these values. Okay. We tag the function that injects the values with the parameters, and we create a public um, static collection of um, basically object arrays. Okay. Uh, let's call it data because that's what we are injecting and here let's cre create on the fly the pair of um, inputs and uh, expected uh, function outputs so let's create a new object uh, and then uh, let's do this let's close okay so now we're going to be creating the pair of values so factorial of zero is one, uh, factorial of one is one, factorial of uh, two is two, factorial of three is six, factorial of four is uh, 24, and factorial of five is 120. So effectively what we've done here is we have specified a, um, the input parameters to, uh, to the tests. And this is nothing but these inputs here are going to be passed at the constructor and for each uh, pair here we're going to be creating an instance of this uh, test and then what we're going to be doing here is on the test method test factorial uh, function using parameterized tests here we're just basically going to be using um, these values to, to write our test. So we're going to assert that 
um, you know, given the factorial compute method with the input that that is equal to the expected value. Okay, and if I run this, then it passes, but also notices that the what happened here. So for each of the input and expected pairs, I got one test. So this is a nice way for you to specify tests without having to write all of the, you know, all of the possible, you know, I invocations with inputs and outputs. In case of failures, this might not be, you know, very um, descriptive because, you know, we just see a bunch of index, we don't really know what's going on. So the parameters um, annotation here takes this uh, name and um, you can basically here define the, you know, the name for your test. So we can still keep the index as it was defined before, but now I can put, I can write the name of the function factorial and I will pass uh, the uh, input which is the first parameter, okay? And that produces the output, which is parameter one. So if I now run this test, notice that now I have the appropriate name of the function with the input parameter and the output. So now in case something fails, I can immediately see, okay, what is the test that failed given, you know, what input uh, or expected output was. So another way that you can um, do uh, you know, dependency injection of the inputs and expected outputs for parameterized tests is by using the um, the parameter. And this parameter annotation takes the, you know, the index of the value here that you are, that you want to inject. By default, it starts with zero, so you don't have to, the default value is zero, so you don't have to parameterize it here. But just to be, to be very explicit, let me parameterize it. Another requirement of the parameter um, annotation is that the fields uh, have to be public. This is so that, uh, you know, through reflection, JUnit can inject the values. And uh, if you do that, then you basically are replacing um, constructing injection with field injection. Uh, so that's this is exactly the same thing as this. This does not require a constructor. You can just inject your, um, annotate your fields with this. So now if I run this, then it should work. Just like before. So to conclude, this is uh, parameterized tests um, uh, using the parameterized runner is a very nice way for you to run tests or specify tests that have a, b a lot of permutations of uh, the input data for a test. So this concludes the um, introduction to parameterized tests in JUnit. Thanks for watching.